Okay, here we go. We're we're live here with Tristan Lacone, one of the newest members of the Texas Longhorn basketball team. Uh, Blake Brown here with Backroads Basketball. I'm really happy to announce that Tristan is part of not only the Texas Longhorn basketball team, but the Backroads Basketball uh, family. He's he has agreed to join me in this journey, and he's got. Uh, Taking advantage of the new NCAA rules, the name, image, and likeness. So Tristan is, is joining Backroads Basketball. We're going to be rolling out in the future some gear uh, specifically dedicated to telling his story, and, and he's going to assist me in telling my story of Backroads Basketball and the great history of basketball throughout the state of Texas. Uh, but without further ado, I want to introduce Tristan. Tristan, welcome aboard. How's it going yeah, today? Sure. It's going great. I'm blessed to be here. I'm blessed to be part of this family. And thanks for having me on today. Well, it's my pleasure. Tristan, I met you back last year, if you recall, at the Texas Association of Basketball Coaches. Okay. And you were on your way. Uh, to be a graduate assistant coach at the University of Mary Hardin Baylor in Belton. Is that right? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. I was uh, definitely trying to find my way into coaching. And um, really, that, that was the first step for me. And uh, I mean, just we cross paths, cross paths along the way, and you never know where it's going to take you. So definitely. Exactly. It. So tell me what happened. Uh, it's a great story. Coach Beard mentioned it to me one day at practice and he was pointing you out and he says, he says, man, you got to know this guy's story. And so, you know, he's busy. He told it to me very briefly, but you were on your way to Belton. You made a pit stop or something in Austin. And here you are uh, a valued member of the Texas Longhorns. Tell us your story about how you became a Texas Longhorn this year. Yeah. So Oh, well, a little bit about me. I'm from El Paso, Texas. Uh, played ball at America's High School out there. Um, Coach Brooks and uh, went to uh, Sal Ross State University, played D3 basketball. And uh, my coach, uh, Coach Carroll, I mean, really good friend of Coach Beard. And um, he recruited me out there, kind of like my last opportunity to play college basketball. I wasn't highly recruited out of high school. and um, Gave the opportunity and I made the most out of it. Uh, I mean, we won games, won championships, accolades came along the way and uh, met some really great people out there. And um, I thought my time was up after four years, you know, uh, I thought I did everything I could do. I got two degrees there and uh, I really didn't know what was next for me other than wanting to get into coaching. So, right. Um, Really, uh, Coach Carroll had left the you know, Mary Harden Baylor. Uh, I stayed behind for my last year at Sol Ross. I was already uh, finishing my degree, and it was just the best uh, decision for me and my family. And um, stayed, finished out my my uh, career at Sol Ross. And uh, during the summer, I uh, had mentioned to Coach Carroll, like, I'm looking again into coaching. Uh, is there any opportunities for me? And uh, of course, at the time, I mean, uh, I had always grown up a huge Texas fan. And uh, when Coach Beard was hired in April, I told Coach Carroll, I said, you know, it might be a long shot, but is there any way, like, we could work some, uh, pull some strings, you know, and uh, maybe help me get on staff at Texas? It's just always been a dream of mine. I'm a huge uh I've been following Coach Beard since he was in small college basketball. And um, I really thought that'd be a huge opportunity for me to really expand my coaching or get started in my coaching career. Absolutely. And so I uh, mentioned, uh, I texted uh, Coach Beard, pretty long message, like telling him congratulations. And um, really, I'd be willing to do anything to work for him. And so um time just kind of went by and I showed up in Austin probably late May and was really just trying to get into the system was showing up every day and um doing anything he asked or 
really just trying trying to prove that I was capable of the work for him. And um, the nickname Creative came from, um, so I, I, I was doing some photo work with the team as um, part of a way I was trying to prove myself. And uh, if you don't know, the creative people are the ones that do all the edits for the social media. So for short, <laughs> they just go by creative. And right. so pretty much for for a couple couple days there, a couple weeks, I was creative. Um. Now let, let me finally, stop you right there. That's that's. What do you know about photography? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, he asked me, and I told him. I said I did a yearbook in high school. I was a photographer. Uh, I know some basic settings, but I, I know some things that would be able to get the job done for you. So, I mean, that was good enough. So that was a great <laughs> pump fake. That was a, that was your pump fake. That was, good, that, that was my shot. That was that was my shot. Okay, go on, too. go on. And uh, so then just kind of the days went by and uh, I still didn't know if I was really proving myself to be good enough or, you know, just still showing up every day and uh, doing what I could to help the team and uh, help him out, help the guys, help the other GAs. And uh, finally, one of the days, a couple of the guys had asked me to play open gym really because I of course you could say you can hoop but you really don't they don't know until you prove it so um one of the days went out there and uh I mean they really liked what they saw and went to coach and said man this guy this guy can actually play a little bit I mean you might want to consider him being on the team and uh coach calls me in and we have a talk and he says, like, do you have eligibility left? And I said, I believe I do with the whole COVID situation. You know, everybody was granted another year of eligibility. And, uh, like, you know, jokingly, he, he was like, man, well, like, do you want to play? And, of course, my thought was, wow, you know, are you, are you serious or are you just messing with me? And so, again, a couple of days went by. and. Uh, next, you know, um, do some paperwork, you know, get in the portal, make sure everything was right, the paperwork. And uh, by the end of, by the end of uh, summer two, I was out there on the court practicing with the guys. So you just, you never know what doors can open from what. And I mean, just persistency, hard work and um just being able to prove yourself and never selling yourself short is really what's gotten me here. So, I think that's an amazing story. You know, you gave me a lot of details that that Coach Beard during practice one day kind of glossed over, but he he used the term, you know, perseverance with you. And you know, now when all these young coaches that call me all the time and say, "Hey, how do I get into co coaching?" I'm just going to refer them to you because you're, you're the expert. And I, I do sincerely think it's a great story. And that part of what you're telling us is, well, it, it is the reason why I said, you know, you're the perfect representation for backroads basketball, because if anybody knows where Sol Ross university is, you know, that you kind of toiled in obscurity for the last four years and all these things came together that really allowed you to do this, if it wasn't for COVID and the NCAA granting everybody a year of eligibility or an extra year of eligibility, because when you played that last year, it's as if it didn't happen, you know? Yes, yeah. And so, and then Coach Carroll, knowing Coach Beard, Coach Beard coming to the University of Texas, all those things, it's, it is a remarkable story. And I'm, I'm glad that you're on this backroads basketball team because of how you've handled yourself in that transition. Very, yeah, very, I mean, very good. Good stuff, yeah, Tristan. If uh, you really want to talk about back road, uh, Alpine, Texas, Saul Ross State is at, I mean, small division three school. It's probably got about 2,500 students, a town of 6,000. And um, it's really pretty. Uh, the campuses out there in the hills. Oh, yeah. Um, small town, but uh, really, really nice place to visit. 
Um, and the facility was really nice. I mean, the gym we played at, the Pete Geigo Center, held about 3,000 people. So it was one of the nicest facilities in Division Three. And um, just to – I believe I, I've gained a lot of respect for – from these guys here at Texas, just, you know, some, some D3 guys can hoop a little bit. And um, I, I'm just, again, blessed and honored to even have this opportunity to be at Texas. Well, it sounds to me like you've earned it. And, and you've also, you know, you're representing a lot of D3 players out there. And for me, having coached at the small college level for many years, I know how good it is. I know how good the small college players are. Mm -hmm. um, so it's quite remarkable. So this year, obviously, you're going to play at the Frank Irwin Center, but you also get to travel to all these really cool basketball venues, one of which being, you know, Fog Allen Fieldhouse up in yep. Kansas. Uh, let's, let's take this the other direction. What's the worst place that you played <laughs> uh, while you were – on the D3 circuit? What, what was the worst? Best and worst? Uh, I don't want to throw out any uh, names of <laughs> universities, but there there was a school in Mississippi that uh, I don't know if it's because I missed some game-winning free throws or what, but uh, Bellhaven, it was just a tough place to play and it, small gym, you know. Um, but I, I wouldn't say that the, the D3 travel was a lot worse. I mean, uh, it was just, it built a lot of toughness for sure. Absolutely. And I'm very, th I'm very thankful for, for that. Uh, just being able to experience things. I mean, at the D3 level, we had 15 hour bus rides uh, where we had to leave two days before the game, you know, drive halfway and uh, drive the rest of the way. But then also at the D3 level, we were granted, you know, being in a small, small town when we made the national tournament my freshman year we actually uh the the nearest airport to alpine is two hours so we actually the ncaa sent a private jet for us to uh to fly to our national tournament game in wisconsin so i got a little taste of a private jet but uh i know that that would be a, a a thing you know for every every road game around here so um definitely looking forward to the experience but um Again, I'm thankful for the uh, the experiences I had at the D3 level. Um, as for the best gym, I, it's definitely home court advantage. It's all Ross. I mean, the altitude in the Alpine is just hard for other players to breathe out there. And uh, it was the main show in town. So really, everybody came out to the games and we had a good environment. Well, I know Coach Beard is working to have, uh, you know, a great environment this year. Uh, in his first year at Texas. Um, what do you see in Coach Beard that allows him to connect with so many people? I mean, he's just, he's a go-getter. And if he wants something, he, he's going to go get it. And um, I mean, he just, he works hard. He's up at the office late nights, early mornings. And um, I mean, he, he's just, he's really good with students. And uh, everybody else, you know, just promoting the guys, um, just the product we put out there. And, uh, he he just sells it to everybody really well, and uh, he he backs it up. I mean, he's got the hardest playing team in the country year in and year out, and uh, he's, just, he's just a great coach and a go getter. And like I said, if he wants something, he's going to get it done. Yeah, it's a good way to put it. Uh, I've known him for a long time, and that's that's what I've noticed, too. Uh, if he wants something, he's going to do it. Um, so tell us about your home opener. You've got Houston Baptist coming up. Uh, what What's practice has been like? You guys getting focused? Are you ready to go? Yes, sir. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to respect every opponent. Um, I mean, every the next game of our schedule is the most important game, so – um just looking forward to that and uh he did say if the student section is sold out well he'll throw a party at the tower so hopefully that brings a lot of students out and brings a lot of energy around the Irwin Center for its last uh last year so um but yeah we're, we're working really hard in practice you know getting ready for Houston Baptist 
and uh, just doing what we can do and uh, working to put the best product of Texas basketball out there. I know people are excited. I know I'm excited as an alum, as a former basketball letterman. I'm excited to see this new era. Uh, I think Coach Beard is probably the perfect fit. Uh, if there's ever been a more perfect fit, uh, somebody's going to have to show it to me as far as this particular job, you know, uh, especially he was a member of the program himself, like I was as a student manager. So it's really cool to see that. Um, Tristan, I'm thankful that you're a part of this group. I'm excited to be able to have you promote Backroads Basketball and, of course, promote the Texas Longhorns, promote yourself, uh, your nickname, Creative. We've got some, you know, gear related to that. So I'm excited to be able to show that to people. Um, hopefully sure. we can actually launch it on game day uh, and you'll get to steer people to that and that'll be fun. Uh, but, you know, Tristan, hook them horns. Good luck on Tuesday and I appreciate you being here. Yes, sir. Thanks for having me. Hook them. You bet.